So when you start using the trigger flex, when you start using this, you're going to connect this to Eloquence's uh, electrosurgical unit. And the beauty of this is when you're working on the disc, you don't want too much of that heat to travel outside the disc. Say you have a gradable tear and you don't want that heat to travel into a neural element. So their electrosurgical unit operates at a higher frequency. It, requ it requires less heat to cause the same tissue change as a traditional ESU. And so you can, you can have a little bit more of a safety margin when you connect the trigger flex to their ESU, which they'll bring to the case. You they'll can see on. basically kind of following that Kanban's triangle approach. Yep. We're trying to enter close to the SAP, low in the foramen, that's really our goal. And then once we've seen the approach of the needle on oblique view, right? You're gonna really bullseye that view. You're gonna go back to AP and uh, you're gonna check to make sure that you haven't gone too far. Just like if you do a lot of kyphoplasty, you're always checking to see that you haven't passed the medial border of the pedicle. So we've got two tools here. Here is our cannula, and then here is our dilator. The dilator goes into our cannula, and then this whole thing screws into place, and we'll enter, uh, we're gonna use Seldinger's technique, place that into place. So we're just dilating a little bit. Getting down to the level of the disc. The, the cannula also has a bevel on it. So, and that bevel's marked by those hash marks right on the handle. So you always know which direction the bevel is turned. Oh, perfect. Yep. So you want to touch right at the right surface at the of the annulus. So you want to be right in the posterior aspect of the disc in the lateral, correct? Yep, absolutely. Nice. And, and you want to make a larger cavity. You want to soften up really hard tissue. This tool is great for that. When you squeeze the trigger, it flexes upward, so it gives you a lot of ability to go through lots of portions of the disc as you rotate. Okay. And this connects to the electrosurgical unit. Okay. This has two, two pads here. So if you can make that out, the black is when you want to ablate nucleus, so bipolar turbo. And then the bipolar hemo is a lower temperature, lower energy. You don't want to ablate annular material. You want to seal it together. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit less heat, allows you to seal that And together. that's basically at the end when you're closing that hole that we punch through the annulus, correct? And, and when you want to seal micro tears. If you have the high intensity zones on the MRI. Exactly, or, yep. exactly. Every disc herniation has micro tears along the posterior yep. aspect mm -hmm. of it. And you're going to go in with this and you're going to seal those tears mm -hmm. all the way through. So do you ever do a case where you don't use the electric component? Uh, very rarely, because if I have any disc herniation, I know I have micro tears. Okay. Yeah. So I will. I, I may not spend a lot of time on the bipolar turbo mm -hmm. to remove nuclear material, yeah. but I will spend time just sealing up any of those micro okay. tears. And if you have a gradable tear, you're going to feel the tip of this kind of as you're stroking this across the annulus, you're going to feel it kind of drop in mm -hmm. to that gradable tear, and you know you have to work a little bit harder. Quick question on the lumbar. When you're, yeah. when you're targeting with your x-ray, we always talk about the Scotty dog. Where, where mm -hmm. are you usually tar targeting when you're obliquely viewing? Right. So as so you can come up on an oblique view. Yeah. Do, it's just because uh, I, I know that's one of those angle. things that's so, familiar. Right. So take that. Come up a little more. There we go. Right there. Right there. So you see how we have that SAP or the ear of the Scotty dog in the posterior third of the disc. So if you take this approach generally, this will allow you to safely enter a central disc herniation. You need to be more oblique than you normally would. And that's why I said in the beginning, when you start doing discograms, when you start doing transferaminal epidural steroid injections, you really want to practice that obliqueness. Because okay. if you can do a central disc herniation, you can tackle a lateral, a far lateral. You can tackle lots of different discs. You just have to change your angle of approach. So, this so is some folks were out there using this set for doing cervical um, cervical discs. And when we found out, uh, the company was able to miniaturize. So if you take a look at these two, the difference. So this is a cervical set called Disc FX Mini. And um, everything is smaller. So if, if you're comfortable doing cervical discograms. All levels. Stephen or below C two or what, what do we? What yeah, do we I don't. Do? I don't think we're going. We're you know. I think we're going from like C two and down. Okay. I don't. I don't think we're gonna be up that high. Yeah, what's that pathology we're seeing is four, five, Mostly five, six. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Lower so, so here's here's the real comparison. If you take a look at these, this is your grasping forceps for the two. They're very. I don't know how close you can get, yeah, but they're, they're very, very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
Initially, um, we got a little worried with the size of this set going in cervically, but for folks who are already doing cervical discograms or placing the needle in the disc, they're very, very comfortable. And we've ended up doing tons of these cases now. And mm -hmm. it, you know, some folks don't do it, but it's out there. Just wanted to let every, everyone know yeah. we do labs on this as well. You know, they have a, they have a lot of great tool sets. If you're interested in endoscopic foraminal approaches, mm -hmm. they have a tool set for that. And then if you're interested in endoscopic facet joint rhizotomy, um, they've, they've got an amazing tool set for that. So a lot of, lot of cool options here. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys. Good job, AJ, thanks, awesome guys. as always. Thank you, Lizzie. Good to see you. Great stuff.